there is a Psalm 48, the last verse in the Psalm, it says that Hashem will be our guide even unto death. And this book, the Kitbe HaKodesh, the Tanakh, and the little book you see hanging in the light, the Brit Hadashah, these are the words of Almighty God. They come from the Ruach HaKodesh. And these words are our guide even unto death. Amen. And this is the verse, Psalm 48, verse 14. He will be our guide even unto death. Because the mystery of godliness is great. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the nations, believed on in the world, received up into glory. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it's my obligation as a Bible translator <clears throat> to make sure the Yiddish words say exactly that. And I need prayer. And that's why we're praying every night. And this book, oh, hallelujah, this book, God is going to put it in, in a bright spotlight, and it will be seen all over the world. The United Bible Societies will put it all over the world. Translators you, in the jungle will see it. Thank you. Translators in the Arctic Circle will see it. Translators uh, that are down in the... Uh, Jungle. Cape Cape uh, of Africa. Uh, you know, it, it, I wish you could get out a globe <clears throat> and look at the entire world, the most southern point and the most northern point. Look at all the nations. Everywhere you look, there is a United Bible Society translator at work. And when this translation that you see hanging in the light. When it's uploaded, they will all see it. They will all see it at the same time. So you might be in the Congo swatting mosquitoes and worried about malaria or a tsetse fly or whatever. And there you are with your flashlight and your battery operated uh, uh, computer or your little iPad and you're trying to type the language of some tribe that you reached by a canoe. And maybe you're working on one little verse or one little book. And all of a sudden on the internet, you see Orthodox, Hasidic, Yiddish, Brit Hadashah. And then the next thing you know, it's right there on your screen. You say, well, these guys can't read Yiddish. All I can tell you, my friend, is that the Lord is, is preparing this spotlight, a global spotlight on the little book that you see under a lamp. But the lamp that will be burning will be burning all over the world. Yes. And this is something that has to have prayer. This is something that requires prayer. Now, I have gone through two different Ridah de Shahs and circled with a pencil every time the author says, and so it is written in the Kitve HaKodesh, or so the Bible says, or so states the prophet. Or so it stands written. And I have to make sure that those Hebrew words, which the, the writer is quoting, that they are in good, understandable, contemporary Yiddish. And this is a, an awesome 
an awesome assignment. And I cannot do it except the Lord help me. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the person, the preacher, the man of God, the person of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, equipped unto all ma'asim tovim, good works. Now, my friend, this is referring to the inerrant autograph copies. We're talking now here about inspiration. We're talking about taking all of the extant translations, copies, codexes, scrolls, ancient versions, quotations from different people who had an ancient Bible in front of them, and then discerning the text and then putting it into contemporary Yiddish. And this refers, and, I, and now I'm talking about the inspiration of the original authors to the supernatural guidance of the writers of scripture. They were guided by the spirit of God so that what they wrote was the living word of God from the living God the Elohim Hayim, the living God. And they transcribed it accurately and reliably and without error in the original manuscripts, the so-called autographs. And then scribes copied and recopied these autographs. And you say, well, wait a minute, all those scribes couldn't one of them miscopy a word? Yes, he could. Well, then is it such a good idea that there were so many scribes? Yes, it is. Because if I write down on a piece of paper, give this message to my grandniece, and I pass it around and you make your copy and the next person makes his copy and the next person makes his copy. If they all write down grand niece, except one who writes down niece and leaves off the grand, then the very fact that there were all those witnesses to what I said and they wrote it down helps me to discern what I actually wrote down or what I actually said or what the actual autographs or original manuscripts were. And so we're talking about inspiration and we're talking about God breathing out his word, yes. exhaling his word to men. All scriptures God breathed. Not everything written by, an, by a shaliach or, an, or a navi, was necessarily inspired. We know that Paul wrote at least three epistles to the Corinthians, but apparently only two were inspired and the uninspired one was lost. And we know that Samuel, uh, Nathan or Nathan and Gad, each wrote accounts of David's life but only one of these prophets produced an inspired record. First Chronicles 29, 29. And um, since the scriptures are given to help believers grow in maturity, they should rely on them for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that's why when a translator translates, it is 
such a horrendous weight of responsibility. It requires prayer. It cannot be approached in a vainglorious and lighthearted way. We have to crawl on our knees to the Mizbeach, to the altar. And we have to say, Lord, have mercy. Help us, Lord, who is sufficient for these things? These are your people. They are perishing. My people perish for a lack of knowledge of the word of God. They don't have the word. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach without the scriptures? How can they preach unless they are sent and sent with the scriptures? There was a man in the Warsaw ghetto, his name, Rockmiel Friedland. The Nazis were hunting him, looking for him. He had to dye his hair blonde. He went into hiding. He asks various men of God to hide him, but they were afraid. They, they were afraid of the Nazis. So he was sort of on his own. But you know what? He wasn't on his own. God was watching over this man. And yeah. God made sure that he got a little Yiddish Brit Hadashah. It wasn't even a good translation. But even though it was not the best, it helped him get the idea. And he became a believer. He became a great believer, greatly used of God. And I had the opportunity to sit down with him in New York. And he gave me something that I could use in a book that I wrote called Everything You Need to Grow a Messianic Yeshiva. And he encouraged me. And now I'm doing this. At the time, I did not know I would be doing it. But the Lord knew. But the Lord also knew that we could not do this without prayer. So every night, 365, 7.30, for one hour, we pray. And oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us so much strength. You've given us so much wisdom, so much help. The Bible makes it very clear. You receive not because you ask not. By asking and asking largely and asking daily and asking every night and asking at 7.30 every night, you have opened your ears to our cry and you have helped us. And we want to thank you, dear God. And we want to give you the praise and we want to go back and we want to go back to the Psalms. And we started tonight reading uh, Psalm uh, 40 and 41 and, and 42. Hallelujah. And 43 and 44. Hallelujah. And you helped us, Lord. And, and as we prayed, certain psalms really stuck because they are manna for today. They are manna for right now. Hallelujah. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the Bible. 
which is also a prayer book. Hallelujah. And everybody said, 